Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radio detectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. You can become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month. Just go to patreon.greatdetectives.net. And I want to go ahead and thank uh, Marcus, uh, who became our latest Patreon supporter at the Shamus level of $4 or more per month. Thanks so much for the support, Marcus. And you can also support the show on a one-time basis, support.greatdetectives.net, using the Zell app to box13 at greatdetectives.net, or by mail to Adam Graham, P.O. Box 15913-15913, Boise, Idaho, 83715. And now we're going to enter the world of Casey Crime Photographer. Jack Flashgun Casey was created by George Harmon Cox in a story published in Black Mask Magazine in 1934. The character would be a success uh, with 21 different uh, stories appearing in Black Mask. He would take a couple of those that were uh, serialized and would uh, use them as the basis of novels, which I'm going to take a look at before we get through with this radio series over the next year and a half. There were also two uh, movies that were based on Flash uh, Gun Casey, uh, one of which we will be able to bring you on public domain video theater next year. Now, when the series came to radio, it was not actually known as Casey Crime Photographer. The initial title was Flash Gun Casey. And then for a little more than a year, it would be Casey Press Photographer. And then for the rest of its run, which would be about a total of eight and a half years, it would be known as either Crime Photographer or Casey Crime Photographer. And it's really known as Casey Crime Photographer mainly because most of the surviving episodes are uh, under the title of Casey Crime Photographer. And I do want to go ahead and... uh, mention that I am referring to the website bluenotebulletin.blogspot.com, which is essentially a series of notes uh, by uh, Dr. Joseph Webb, who is uh, probably the biggest uh, Casey uh, fan there is. And uh, he's got great information on every single episode. So I will be referring to that as we go through the series. And you can check it out over at uh, bluenotebulletin.blogspot.com. All right. Well, uh, according to Blue Note Bulletin, uh, this was set to star Frank Lovejoy, who would later play Randy Stone in Not Beat, uh, as well as a couple other uh, programs we played but instead he went and uh, did a play and so uh, the role fell to Matt Crowley who we recently heard as Dick Tracy. We have the first episode of the series and the audio quality is not great so bear with us. So from July the 7th of 1943 here is the first episode of Flash Gun Casey The Case of the Switch Plates. Flash Gun Casey, press photographer. Out of a big city's roaring life, out of a great newspaper's pounding heart, come the exciting adventures of a man with a camera. Flash Gun Casey, press photographer. Columbia presents a new adventure character, Flash Gun Casey, press photographer. Tough, daring, typical of the men who often risk their lives so that you may see the news as well as read it. Their salaries are not large, and they seldom get much credit. But their lives are packed with danger and thrills. 
Tonight and every Wednesday night at this time, Columbia invites you to follow the story of Flash Gun Casey and the people who pass in swift-moving parade before the shutters of his camera. Tonight's story, The Case of the Switch Plate. The clock in the tower of the express building reads exactly 7 p.m. In the city room, Ed Burke, the night nice city editor, is arguing with Casey, a tall, powerfully built man who is carrying a plate case and a camera. Quit griping, Casey. You've got your pictures, I'll go develop them. Okay, but for the last time, don't send me to any more weddings. I hate weddings. Tell me that when you marry. If that day ever arrives, I'll see that it's a private one. Not an Easter parade. Not a big shot there, huh? Stage, green, and radio. I was knee-deep in celebrity. Did Ann Williams cover the story okay? I guess so. My job was to take pictures of the clam bake, not to write about it. Many a guy would give a month's salary to be in the same room with Gloria Dolores. Ouch. What's what the matter now? That name, Gloria Dolores. I wonder who dug that one up. Miss Dolores is one of our most famous movie stars. With all that's going on in the world today, a mere wedding is unimportant. Whenever a woman like Mr. Lawrence gets married, it's not a mere wedding. And I hope you got some good shots. White satin and orchids barely dripped from the lens. And the Express would like to use those pictures sometime tonight, if you don't mind. Okay, okay, but if the public never sees it... Gloria and the Dolores, what are you doing? Thanks, Anne. That's what I mean. The story of the Dolores. Yes. The poor guy doesn't count. Already he's missed the Dolores. Out of the picture, Senor. He wouldn't know. He's been too busy arguing against that wonderful institution known as marriage. I'm not arguing against it. I only say send someone else when our dear paper wants pictures of the happy dear paper. We'll cover a lot of assignments like the Dolores wedding. That doesn't mean I'll have to like him any better. You mean you'd rather be taking pictures of something? Are you kidding? But Mr. Dolores did look sweet, didn't he? Did look sweet. Yeah. And so did the groom, Mr. Dolores. <laughs> Knocking at my door. Well, come on in, William. Hey, not so wide. You're letting in too much light. Oh, sorry. Dark in here. That, that's why they call it a dark. Really? Why did you say it? I just put him in the suit. Faces and figures should be showing any moment, huh? And um, the Lord says. Mm, I'll do anything to look at her. You, uh, you old girl. And stop whispering. I don't know why everyone does that when they come into one of these rooms. See, you won't like it. They'll develop... Oh, okay, Mr. Casey. Hey, okay. Wait a minute, my ear. Hmm, this is not He has a marvelous smile, is not he? Did you say so? There's a hundred million up. Hey, what's this? Whatever it is, it's not a wedding. No. Oh, looks like a workshop. Mm. Look, here's another one. A long room filled with odd looking machines. Yeah. And here's a close up of one. I never took these. How'd they get in my camera? Somebody took them. Yeah. Well, get this. Some guy running over. Well, he's running right toward the lens. Yeah, he looks mad. Uh oh. Recognize it? No, but I do everything else. Or I think I do. These pictures are of the Hartley Laboratories. The Hart... Oh, he's the inventor, isn't he? One of the greatest. He's a regular estate. Six or seven buildings on the place. Conducts all his experiments there. I mean, this looks like a machine shop. I uh, suppose a lot of people would like to nose around there. You can say that again. But they're not allowed to. All their work is done in secrecy. Hartley even has his own private guard. They won't allow a camera within a mile of the place. <laughs> I send the guy to take pictures of a wedding, and he comes back with the Hartley Laboratory. But I tell you, I never took those shots. You think I'm crazy? I know, I know. And the ones of the wedding, you didn't take those either. No, someone picked up my plate case by mistake. I got his. See? It's almost exactly like mine. The gentleman was very careless. It was a natural mistake. Why, we were stumbling over each other. That shindig was represented by every news photographer in town. Not forgetting the ones from the magazine. Yeah. Well, whoever he is, I'm glad he didn't hold the laboratories to an exclusive. At least he took some pictures of the wedding, too. Well, we'll have to run them. 
I doubt if that plate case of yours will ever turn up. I'll get it back. You're lucky you didn't walk off with your camera. And that must be like mine, too. Hey, look for it. This is serious. The guy who took these pictures had no right being on that property. I suppose I don't know that. (laughs) What's so funny? I'm thinking how surprised the guy was when he developed your pictures. All that glamour and no machines. You know, what I can't understand is this man here. He's going right toward the camera. Yes, that is odd. It looks as though he would... Hey, wait a minute. Who were you near at the wedding, Casey? I've been trying to think. Blake of the Star was a good man. Yeah. Raymond of the Inquirer. John's a fashion magazine. Mm-hmm. The four of us sort of stuck together, moving around, taking shots of the other celebrities as well. Oh, but it couldn't be one of them. Why not? I've known them for years. They wouldn't take a chance like that. Some guys that sell their souls for a little dough. I'll take this. Burke speaking. Yeah? What? That's very interesting. About six hours ago, eh? Thanks. Okay, I'll switch you to a rewrite. Dixon, take this. That was Kelly. Ah, uh, Kelly, you covered the police? Yeah. They just found a plainclothes guard out of the Hartley Laboratories. Two bullets in his chest. Killed about six hours ago. Does that mean anything to you, Casey? Yeah, it does now. He's the guy here in the picture. He was running to stop that camera. And in the excitement... Our photographer got him on a film before he shot it. Yeah, that's the way it adds up. Well, get out there and see if we're right. And check on your friends, Blake, Raymond, and Johns. And be careful. It'll be much easier for him to finish off his second victim. And from where I sit, you look like the next prospect. What a beautiful woman. This Dolores looks extremely lovely. A guest shot. Ballroom and table beautifully decorated. But I can't see where any of it helps me. But I've explained, Mr. Koch. I never took those pictures. Then who did? Well, I don't know. But I suppose you do know that he has the ones you took. Well, he must have. Hmm. Like these, no doubt, developed by I, I don't remember my plate case being out of my hands for a moment. A moment would be enough. Well, there's no way they can trace it to me. I'm safe. Are you? A long time for him getting a man in there. I mean, at a time when he could work with a camera and not be interrupted. That opportunity won't come again. And and I suppose it's useless to ask for money? Quite, you fail. Well, I greatly appreciate looking at this very lovely actress. I would much more appreciate looking at the photographs you lost. Especially the ones with that new fog penetrating machine. I know two corporations would pay $100,000 for that. I've never failed before. And you've always been paid before. I was listening to my radio just before you came in. You know the guard that you eliminated has been found? He came out of nowhere, running toward me. And you stopped this, running. Yes, I had to. I think his picture's on one of the plates. Very clever. Do you always photograph your victims before doing away with them? I, I never killed anybody before. Please. Oh, well, well, I never did. I didn't think I'd ever have to. Mm. First one does leave you a fact of shaking. After that, you become me. But if you'd brought the photograph directly to me... But I had to be at that wedding, Mr. Koch. As it was, I barely made it. Yes, that's of course your job, which is such a wonderful blind. Tell me, how did it feel walking into all that luxury immediately after disposing of a man? Blood in that socket, that is it. Socket, that is it. Socket, that is it. I wonder what I wonder what your employers would do if they even dreamed of the pictures you sometimes take with their camera. Remember, that was my idea. The same camera for both my ordinary work and the work I do for you. Mm. That way no one will ever become suspicious. No? I don't doubt that someone is at this very moment. And he knows that the photographer is not only a thief, but also... Well, we say someone who doesn't hesitate to stop another dream. Hey, you're right. But how's he going to know it's me? Well, maybe he won't, but if one of your picture-taking friends should start to ask questions, no matter how subtly put, be careful. I will. And if he should become too inquisitive, you can always handle him as you did the guard. Yes, when that gentleman makes his appearance, remember, he's the man who has your bag. <laughs> and you've been left holding one. <laughs> Guy, all right. The murderer rolled his 
body against the wall and put a machine cover over him. Now, wait, wait. They didn't let you in, did they? No, but I talked to the man who found him. Also to a couple of Logan's men. Who's Logan? Lieutenant Logan of the Homicide Squad. Oh. Did you tell them about the picture? Yeah. And every photographer I could think of who covered the wedding. I left the uh, plate case with them. That's right, it's racist. A lot of good. That'll do. Yeah, there's thousands of those cases. What about your pals, Blake, Raymond, and Johns? They're not pals. The guys I bump into making the rounds. But you've known them a long time. Yeah. Well, what do you really know about them? Yeah, they all have cameras and plate cases like mine. I mean personal. That's personal. Now, look, this is no time for... All right, all right. If you two feel like using some stronger language, I can uh, always leave the room. Oh, forget it, William. Forget Uh, it. Blake is married. He has two kids. I found him at home reading uh, Our Hearts Were Young and Gay. I wish I was. Well, well, go on, go on. He was sort of surprised to see me, as I don't usually make those little social visits. We know you're a strict lay night club guy. Quiet. Anyway, I asked him what he'd been doing before the wedding. With finesse, I hope. I'm always stuck. Yeah, like a tank. And what was Mr. Blake doing? Roaming around. Oh, fine. You see, that guard was murdered around 2 o'clock. The wedding took place at 3. The reception at 4. So the guy you who did... You don't have to draw a blueprint. Where did you find Raymond of the Empire? At a bar. With a blonde. No, redhead. Not the, Not the one you know, Bert. Oh. There are a lot of redheads in the world. And uh, what had he been doing prior to 3 o'clock? Roaming around. That's just dandy. That's just dandy. And John to the fashion magazine. Uh, also found at a bar. The one at the fantasy club. Alone. Yeah, but uh, his girlfriend worked there. And early this afternoon... Now, wait, wait. Was... Don't, don't tell me. Don't tell me. Let me guess. Don't, don't tell me. Don't tell me. Let me guess. He was roaming around. Right. Not an alibi in the bunch. I still can't believe one of them did it. Still can't believe one of them did it. But it must be. It must be. Well, I found two of them at bars, and that's where I'm going. Can I take a long kiss? Can I take a long kiss? Why not? Down the blue note, huh? Yeah. Where's that? It's a musician. Where's that? It's a musician's hangout. Casey always goes there when he wants to think. They have a piano player there. They have a piano player. Who's his nerve? And sometimes helps me solve a problem. Well, I hope he can help you with this one. And you'd better warn Williams about that bartender. Yeah. His name is Ethelbert. And he reads the Atlantic Monthly in Lord Dunsany. And he's tough. Sometimes he has to be the bouncer, but uh, you'll enjoy him. I expected to hear a jam session going on. It's only 11.30. The musicians don't roll in here until they're through work. Oh. Want to sit at the bar? Fine. Ethelbert. Put down that new republic and give us some service. Hiya, flash gun. Service. New republic? Look. One world. How do you find it? Great. It says here on page... Uh, I've read the book. But maybe it didn't absorb it. I did. It's excellent. Hey, what are you looking at? You ever see a pretty girl before? Not that pretty. Well, thank you, Ethelbert. This is Ann Williams, Ethelbert. She is new on the express. I'm nice. showing her the sight. Full of beer. Beer. Williams? Same. Two beers. I'm surprised that you find time to read a book. Yeah. Right now I'm surprised, but not about that. Blake, Rima, John. It has to be one of them, but why? Well, what they were after must be worth a fortune. Yeah. They wouldn't talk about it out there today. Two beers, no heads on them. Yeah, thanks, Ethelbert. What'd you think of Thomas Paine, Flash Gun? He was a very great man. Yeah. Quote, These are the times which try men's souls. Unquote. I know all about Thomas Paine, Miss Williams. I'm going over the piano. Want to come along? Ah, oh, listen, Flash Gun. It's not that I don't want to lend you an ear, Ethelbert, but uh, I have a lot on my mind. Maybe Ernie and his music can help straighten me out. Well, I'll stay put and hear about the famous revolutionary figure. Thanks, Miss Williams. I said you'd enjoy it. As you no doubt know, Miss Williams, Thomas Paine was not a... Hello, Ernie. Oh, yeah. Hello, Slow night. Not too good. What's on your mind? Plenty. Anything you'd like to hear? Nope. As long as you stick to the old one. <laughs> we agree on that. Remember this one? Yeah, sure. Confession. Uh-huh. Late 20s. Maybe earlier. That's right. 
Well, that world's gone. Yep, but we still have the song. Yeah. And sometimes that's all we have. <laughs> Pretty girl you left at the bar. Yeah. Dan Williams reported. Only been in town a few weeks. Thinking, aren't you? And getting nowhere fast. Hmm. Want to talk about it? I can't. Nicest looking girl I've ever seen you with. You ought to marry, Casey. How about yourself? Yeah, I tried it once. And? She left me. Just like that? Just like that. You see, I didn't make enough money. She wanted too much. And uh, she met a guy who had it? That's right. Yeah. Funny the way a guy thinks when he's losing a woman. There's nothing he wouldn't do for her. To give her the things she wants, he'd almost commit murder. Some guys do. Yeah. What's the matter, Casey? Did I say something? I think you did. You going? Yeah. And thanks, Ernie. You've been a great help. I may see you later on. Sometimes I have to throw a guy out, but it ain't like it was in the old days. No? No. Then they threw me out. <laughs> uh, look, William, I've got to run along. You go back to the office and tell Bert I'll see him in an hour or so. Where are you going? To see a dame at the Fantasy Club, and you can't come. Ethelbert, Williams will pay for my beer. <laughs> You only thought so. Anyway, we'll take another one to make sure. All right. I'm awfully glad you dropped around, Kate. <laughs> so am I. I saw you sitting at the table out front while I was doing my number. I didn't think you came to take my picture. Of course, it's no novelty for you to have your picture taken. You sit for Hal a lot. Mm-hmm. Once a week, regularly. <laughs> it must be love. Oh, it's still nice to have someone else photograph me. Um, how's this? Fair. Oh, not as attractive as Mr. Lawrence? Oh, you're different types. Hal tells me it was quite a wedding. Yeah. Were, uh, were you with Hal before he went to it? No, he was working. I know, but, uh, I thought you might have had lunch together. Not today. Um, this better? Yeah, fine. But, uh, don't cross your legs. Oh. And don't smile. We'll make this one sort of, uh, pensive. Oh, I couldn't look pensive if I tried. Uh, think of green fields and moonlight nights. All right. <laughs> but I still won't look pensive. Oh, it's... That does it. Look for them in the express. Well, how many to take all together? Seven. Can I have a set? Sure. I'll drop them over to the towers. That's where you live, isn't it? Uh-huh. Expensive. Perhaps we could uh, have lunch together. And get Hal Stortman? We wouldn't have to have lunch there. As far as that goes, we could have it here. Yeah. I never thought the fantasy club would have dressing rooms like this. This dressing room looks more like an apartment. Just a few personal touches that I've added. Just a few personal touches. Mm -hmm. Very elaborate. And those rocks I've been photographing on your lovely arms. They almost reached the elbows. They're uh, real, I imagine. Everything I wear is real. Mm. I noticed that mink you were sporting around this past winter. Do you like it? Swell. Those foxes over there are nice, too. Oh, gosh, it must be great to have an income. Are you kidding? Well, you don't buy those things singing at nightclub. <laughs> at least not one like this. Uh, why do you work in a nightclub, Ma? Apparently, you don't have to. Well, I like to be seen, and it's something to do. I don't have to tell you I'm not much of a singer. But you're really something to look at. Oh, thanks. Then, uh, we have a date to learn? If it weren't for Hal, I wouldn't hesitate a moment. Oh, forget Hal. I'd like to marry sometime. How long have you two been going together? Almost two years. That's amazing. Why? He's very generous. Yeah, I can see that. I like to live well. You don't know what it is not to have anything. Oh, don't I? I'd rather be dead than to live like some people. Nothing but the best for you, huh, Mary? Oh. Don't you think I deserve it? Mm-hmm. But so do thousands of other girls in the world. There are girls who haven't even enough to eat. Are you giving me a lecture? No, but uh, 
That's why we're not going to have lunch together. You are too expensive for me. Perhaps for you, I wouldn't be too expensive. Mm. It, uh, it wouldn't land. You'd miss those lovely gifts that Hal passes out. Mm-hmm. I still don't see any reason why we shouldn't see each other once in a while. Uh, by the way, uh, where is Hal? Oh, he usually drops in around this time. Shall I tell him you were here? Well, why not? Would you like to wait for him? No, I'll run along. I think I'll develop these pictures tonight. Oh, that's wonderful. The Express thanks you, and I thank you. Do you think one of them might be on the theatrical page tomorrow? The theatrical page? You want to read old Casey? There's a possibility you'll find one on the front page. So long. Hiya, Benny. Any pay phones here? Yeah, two of them. Over there by the section. Oh, thanks. Burke speaking. Hello, Burke. Casey, what do you think we're printing? The boy's companion? Where are you? Phone booth at Benny's Fantasy Club. I just got some shots for the morning papers. And if I were you, I'd leave plenty of space on the front page. Well, you'd better get back here with something soon, or I'll hold a four-line spread in the obituary for you. What are the pictures? And what suspect is to have the benefit of your latest brainwave? I just shot some pictures of the suspect's girlfriend. I'm on my way down to develop them. Now, unless I miss my guess, You'll be writing to the end of this story in tomorrow's paper. And by the way, you'd better get one of Logan's men down there. The way things look right now, I'm... Oh, hold on a minute. Here comes our friend. I think he's going to make a call in the booth next to me. Maybe I can catch part of it. Hold it. Hello, Mr. Cox. He talked to me earlier tonight, and then took some pictures of Mara. For his paper, he told me. But why at one in the morning? No, I'm certain he's the one. Okay. Yes, I'll be careful. Where'll I come for the money? Above your antique shop on Sedgwick Avenue. You mean I've got to take care of him tonight? What do you think I'm made of? It was only this afternoon that I... I know, Mr. Koch, but I never expected that to happen. All right. If you think so, I'll do it tonight. Now. Hello, Brick. Did you hear that? You moronic offspring of a printer's devil. You had your hand over that mouthpiece. Of course I had my hand over the mouthpiece. Think I want you to take all the credit? Now get this. Send several of Logan's men over to Koch's antique shop on Sedgwick Avenue. Mr. Koch will be in the apartment upstairs. Pick him up. And I may need one of Logan's men while I'm developing these pictures. After all the run around you've given Logan, you know how he'll feel about sending a man out to protect you. Okay, but you know what happens to your story if they miss Koch and our friend gets me. Well, Logan will probably take that chance, but I'll ask him. And I doubt if a man could have time to get here anyway. If that's the way it is, maybe you better frame that obituary in purple satin and the glass for me. So long. <laughs> been in the express building before. Lonely at two in the morning, isn't it? Man, it's pretty steady. So you finally noticed what it's holding? I noticed it when you first opened the door. But just uh, relax. Relax, Hal. We're old friends. John's a fashion magazine and Casey the Express. Just a couple of guys around town. Cut it. Is that the same gun you used on the guard? Saying in one respect, it doesn't make much noise. I see. What? 
What made you suspect me, Casey? I could have sworn that it was coming. Why is it that all criminals insist on knowing why they were suspected? Well, if it'll gladden your heart any, I'll tell you. It was a piano player. He said something which made me think of you and Mara. Then I thought of your salary as a photographer. You made a mistake when you went back to the fantasy club the second time, Casey. You shouldn't have tried to pump Mara. Doesn't she know what you're doing? No. Where'd you think the money came from? She never asked. Just as long as it came in, huh? But I don't think it was a mistake. I gambled that Mara would repeat our conversation word for word, except the part where I wouldn't take the lunch. You're right. Oh, no. Incidentally, the police picked up a friend of yours about 15 minutes ago. Name of Koch. Antique dealer over on the east side. Oh, I see that one hit home, huh? Well, you're all through, Hal. Later, maybe, but right now you are. Easy. Easy on the trigger, finger. You should hear it all. The big mistake is yours in coming here. I never had any evidence against you. Any real evidence. But I have now. You'll never use it. I've, I've already used it. It's been used right now. You walk in this room, staring straight at me with a gun in your hand. You should have looked behind the door. There's been a witness in this room all the time. In fact, right behind you now. You think I'd fall for that whole gag? It's not a gag. You must think I'm dumb. I guess you heard enough. Okay, have Logan come in. You'll be dead when he gets here. <laughs> Han, where did you get that blackjack? From Ethelbert. Quote, he who gets dropped over the bean is easy to arrest. Unquote. <laughs> down that American Mercury, Ethelbert, and draw me a beer. It's not the American Mercury, it's... I know. It's still one world. Hi, Miss Williams. Hello, Ethelbert. Oh, thanks for the loan of persuading. That's all right. She was really worried when you tore out of here, Casey. Yeah? Yeah. Been busy, Ethelbert? I had to break away from this book for a while tonight, but I managed to sandwich in a very interesting article. Uh, would you mind drawing my beer for me, Ethelbert? I want to sit over by Ernie and listen to a couple of numbers. Not at all. But this article was about guys who steal industrial designs by photographing them. And you know what I think? What? Well, what? Well, just for a starter, understand, they all ought to be socked over the head, but hard. Quote, he who gets clunked over the conk is out of commission and easy to put in the clink. Unquote. Please, Ethelbert Arbeer. Yes, Ethelbert Arbeer. And this time, be sure he pays for it. <laughs> You've been listening to Flash Gun Casey, press photographer, the first of a new series of adventure programs based on the fiction character created by George Harmon Cox. This series is written by Ashley Buck in collaboration with Mr. Cox. The program tonight was directed by Albert Ward and produced for Columbia by Chester Rainier. Join us again next Wednesday night at this same time for another swift-moving story of a press photographer, Flash Gun Casey, the adventure... Murder off the record. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. Well, this is definitely a very unique episode of the series. If you didn't much care for it, it's quite a bit different from the rest of the series. As uh, uh, Joe Webb writes over at Blue Note Bulletin, uh, this was actually an episode where uh, Mr. Cox, the creator, was uh, involved and so this has a much more hard-boiled feel than you would typically get in uh, the episodes that would follow. Once uh, Alonzo Dean Cole took over the writing chores and wrote the bulk of the episodes that are in circulation. Now this episode introduces the Blue Note and also John Gibson as Ethelbert, which gives the series a bit of continuity even across all all the different name changes because it retains those elements and that uh, particular cast. Ernie the piano player is also an ongoing element although he only has a speaking role in this episode and the next one. Uh, and uh, uh, Webb believes that Ernie was likely uh, Herman uh, Chittison uh, who uh, would provide the uh, 
Blue Note piano music in later episodes, but would not actually speak. Matt Crowley actually only played Casey for two weeks, and then he was replaced by Jim Backus, a.k.a. Mr. Howell or Mr. Magoo. It's always odd to hear Bacchus in a dramatic or serious role over the radio. The role that it's easiest for me to buy Bacchus in is in the Alan Young show as Hubert Updike III, which essentially is a younger version of Mr. Howell. However, we don't actually have any of Bacchus's episodes in circulation. Stats Cotsworth took over as Casey with the 12th episode, and would play that role for the rest of the series run. Although we'll talk more about him next week. Well, now it's time for listener comments and feedback. Marcus writes, I love your broadcast and listen daily. Keep up the good work. Thanks so much, Marcus. And I do want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Nolan, Patreon supporter since April 2018, currently supporting us at the rookie level of $2 or more per month. Thanks so much for your support, Nolan. And that will do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow as we present the Australian version of The Fat Man. And this Saturday, listen for Under Arrest. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.